Hey Saints, it's Sarah B. And uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys about prayer and intercession. And I, you know, really this, this video is for the Bride of Christ, the praying Bride of Christ, who will pray and intercede in regards to this tsunami word and revelation that has come forth. So few people really know about it or really believe it, honestly. And I, I have to tell you, it. I'm convinced. I am 100% convinced. And I just pray, oh Lord, I pray that those who live along the eastern seaboard, if you don't believe it, you. I just pray that you'll seek the Lord and get a confirmation for yourself and start praying for mercy. I became really strongly convinced after I read Casey um, Burt's um, Dream, Two Tornadoes and a Tsunami. And I'm going to link everything on here. <sighs> my goodness, you know, that, that, that was it for me. I, I, I knew in my spirit I was seeing something there in her dream that she posted on April 28th. And basically, the two tornadoes that she saw in the dream matched in many ways. There were many uncanny coincidences that matched the two tornadoes that just hit Oklahoma City May 21st in Moore, Oklahoma, where the school was destroyed. Actually, I think there was more than one school. And then that super wide tornado that hit on, I think, the 31st or the 1st of June. I don't know the exact date in El Reno and that was like the widest tornado ever recorded and it, even in her dream she said that they knew that the second tornado was much larger than the first one okay now her dream perspective was in Florida I mean that doesn't always mean anything because that's just what she was familiar with and also because Florida is a, is a target for the tsunami. In my dream that I had, literally this dream, I was 17 years old when I had that dream. And the Lord brought that dream to my mind in 2008, reminded me of it and gave me the interpretation. And I posted it on my blog in 2008, July of 2008. It's been on my blog all this time. And I... I was with my sister. We were wearing bathing suits. It was summer. It was summertime. And so that's why this is so pressing. Now, I don't know if it's going to be this summertime. I mean, I just don't know. I mean, but I can't rule it out either. I can't, you know, I just can't rule it out. Especially considering, you know, I've been listening to LV, Pastor LV Zapata, trying to get a feel for what he's getting from the Lord. And... It seems like every time I go to listen to him, it's just confirming what the, I feel the Lord's telling me. And I listened to him last night to see what he, if he was going to talk about it, what he would say. And he was saying, pray for mercy. Well, that's exactly what I've been told by the Lord, to pray for mercy. And, you know, I believe that he showed me through another dream, which I'm not ready to release that yet because I'm, I'm still waiting for another confirmation. Which, you know, I mean... I know I got in trouble for asking for so many confirmations and then just not obeying the Lord. <clears throat> he rebuked me for that. But, you know, I just want to be certain. But I believe that the, the tsunami will be lessened and less intense in many places if we pray. That's what the Lord is showing me. I believe that. And in Virginia Beach... There was something to this rainbow that I talked about in my last video, or the one before that, about the tsunami, that we had this double rainbow that lasted for one hour over the city of Virginia Beach, Virginia. I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen a rainbow last that long. I mean, usually 10 minutes and they're, they're gone. But this thing was there for a long time, and I kept thinking, wow, that is really strange. How does a rainbow last that long? 
and and I just knew in my spirit something was up with that. Now I don't know fully yet. I haven't received the full revelation. I'm sure the Lord, you know, if He wants to tell me what it meant, because I know it meant something. Rainbows don't last an hour. At least I don't think. I mean, I probably should research it and, and check it out. I mean, if anyone knows, leave a comment. So, you know, the rainbow was a, was a promise or a covenant that God would not destroy the earth with a flood. Again. I mean, this time it's going to be with fire. So, I don't know, but there's something more to it. I think it's... I really think it has to do with mercy, possibly. So that's another reason why I just feel that we've got to pray. We've really got to pray and intercede, and that's what I've been doing. Oh, man, you guys, I've been crying out to the Lord for mercy. I really have. And then, oh, man, the Lord has been so good. Last Saturday night, right after, or shortly after, I had posted the article with the tsunami warning. That was on the 8th. I was kind of laying on the couch and just meditating on the Lord and just thinking about everything. And I had a visitation of the Lord. I mean, His presence just really came into the room very strong. And I was, you know, you know how you feel that heavy anointing that comes with the presence of God. And I was just like, wow. And he spoke to me, and he, and he said, I am well pleased with you. And I was like, oh, thank God, you know. <laughs> I was so happy to hear that because I knew I, you know, I was suffering from, you know, oh, what are people going to think if I put this warning out? And so the Lord was saying, I'm well pleased you got over that fear. And, you know, because that's what I'm supposed to do. That's my job. <laughs> But, you know, I'm just, gosh, I'm struggling here, guys. It's not easy. I mean, now I know how Jeremiah felt, for goodness sakes. Or at least, you know, somewhat. I mean, you know, I'm not Jeremiah. I'm not saying that. I'm not a prophet. You know, I'm just a disciple. You know, the Lord called me to be an intercessor and to watch and to report it to the church. Pray for the church. To pray for the things he shows me. To produce fruit. And that's really, you know... I mean, it's an important thing, <clears throat> but, you know, I mean, I'm a nobody, you know. I'm just a, a middle-aged woman who's an ex-alcoholic party girl. I mean, seriously. <laughs> so, after the, that, that visitation from the Lord, you know, and, and the presence of the Lord lifted, I'm not kidding you, I heard Satan spoken to my right ear I heard it so clearly he said I hate you and then I heard this like hiss you know the snake the serpent and I was like oh God. you know you know how it is when Satan does that kind of stuff to you I know you you know many of you saints have experienced that kind of stuff and it's just so oh you know you just it just made me so mad but then again I was like well I must be doing something right then something must be you know, I must be doing something right. The Lord's pleased and Satan is pissed. Then what more could, you know, could I ask for as a servant? So I just ask that, number one, if you don't believe the tsunami thing, um, the tsunami warning, Lord, Lord knows, you know, you can't, you can't make people believe something if they don't want to or if they don't even want it ask God you know and everyone thinks that because you don't live on the East Coast well maybe it's not going to affect me so maybe it's like way on the back burner or, listen if this thing happens the way that people have seen it it is going to be beyond catastrophic and dead bodies are going to be piled up high thousands upon thousands and parents are going to lose their children and children are going to lose their parents and we're going to have, I mean, just, it's just going to be horrible. I mean, I don't, I don't even want to think about how horrible it will, it'll, it'll be. And, you know, a, a very strange thing happened about a year and a half ago or so. Um, I was uh, laying in bed, and all of a sudden, 
the strongest odor of seawater, like standing seawater, came into my room. And I was like, what's going on? Now, I live a little over five miles from the ocean. There's no way I'm going to get a sea breeze coming into my room at midnight. Okay, that was a supernatural thing that happened. And I believe, you know, again, the Holy Spirit just, you know, gives us these things, all these little pieces that we put all the pieces together, plus the pieces that we get from the body of Christ. And, you know, we come together because everyone knows in part, you put your parts together, you pray for the situation, you pray for each other, you get the confirmation and you obey God to uh, to warn people and to pray. I mean, oh my goodness, the body of Christ is just such a bunch of slackers. It's just awful. And and I'm not trying to judge anybody cuz I know it's hard. You know, I work full time and you know, it's hard to come home and pray and you know, do all the things. But I tell you, you just got to start removing the stuff from your life. The TV, I got rid of the TV. And, you know, I'm trying not to let the computer take over, <laughs> fill in where the TV left off, you know. So I think the Lord's dealing with me on that. But, you know, that's kind of like my connection to the body of Christ. Because, you know, I only go to church very occasionally. It's, you know, half hour away from here. The only church I really like. And it's just really kind of too far. But, you know, so please pray. Oh, my goodness. I just implore you, dear saints, to pray. Please pray for mercy. Now, I am praying. Here's how I'm praying. I'm praying for the Lord. I'm repenting for myself. I'm repenting for the sins of the city I live in. Okay? And there's a lot of sins. There's a lot of sins. <clears throat> and I am just praying protection and praying for God's mercy over this city. Because this is where I live and also over my neighborhood and I'm also going to go out and I'm going to do a prayer walk around this little community where I live and I'm going to uh, also have my sister do it around where her and my mother live and um, you know I, I'm going to tell you it's something that happened with my brothers here in a second so and I'm praying um, I mean I'm really crying out you know I get pretty emotional sometimes when I pray just weeping before the Lord and just you know, and just, um, you know, asking him, do you want to see the bodies piled up? Oh, Lord, oh, God Almighty. You know, do you want to be here to smell that? To smell the, the, you know, the death? You know, and your righteous people are going to be subjected to this. Who can stand in it? You know, so these are the kind of things that an intercessor will, will say to the Lord. And I know maybe, maybe it seems a little disrespectful, but... Listen, read the Old Testament and the way, you know, the Old Testament uh, prophets prayed to the Lord. You know, they they were intense. And so really it's coming from the Holy Spirit, you know, this unction from the Holy Spirit. And these words just come. Now, a lot of people, you know, they pray in the Spirit. And the Lord just gives me words. He gives me um, just an amazing, you know, words. Words sometimes I don't even know. They just come. And... Um, and just, you know, like I'm having a conversation with him. Like he's in the room, and I'm just speaking to him and imploring him. And just, you know, I mean, it's intense sometimes. So pray. Oh, my goodness. Just pray, pray, pray. What I wanted to mention, when I, I called both of my brothers who are Christians, you know, they're not perfect Christians like, you know, many of us. And I told them about the tsunami warning. And my one brother, who lives on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, I mean, he's right right there on the beach, you know. Well, he's back a little bit. He's on the sound side. He's already had his whole house destroyed with Hurricane Irene, and they had to rebuild it, and, you know. So <laughs> he was just like, you know, Sarah, it's okay. I've been through this before. You know, at least his house is higher now than it was. But he said to me when I when I gave him this warning, he said, you know, I wonder if that's why I feel like I want to die. And I said, really, Mike? You feel like that? And he goes, yeah. He goes, you know, I just feel like I'm ready to leave this place. I'm ready to leave this earth. And, you know, 
well, go be with the Lord. I was like, amen. You know, that's how I feel. I have told the Lord many times that when he's ready to take me, I'm ready to go. I, I don't want to be here one minute longer than I have to. So I can tell you that I am not seeking to save my life by hightailing it out of Virginia Beach. If it were up to me, I'd go stand right on that ocean front like I did in that dream and let that wave take me so I can get the heck out of here. I mean, I'm serious. And it's so interesting that both of my brothers said almost the same thing. My brother Tommy called him. I told him about it. And he, again, he didn't flinch. He was like, you know, he goes, <clears throat> he goes, I'm not praying protection over this place. They can have it. The sea can have it. He goes, I, they can have me too because I'm ready. <laughs> he was ready to go too. So praise the Lord. I'm just glad that they've been ready. Listen, I have prayed my entire family through to readiness to meet the Lord. It's, you know, interceding for them. It's so important to pray and intercede for your family. You know, the Lord woke me up first, and then it was like this chain reaction that happened in the whole family. Because I, I'm not married. I'm I'm married to the Lord. So it's just me and my doggy, Kayla girl. So, anyway, saints, I, I've rambled on long enough here. I just was just sharing my heart about these things, and just above all, seek the Lord and get a confirmation and pray and intercede. If you're along the East Coast, you've got to pray and intercede for your city. It's your duty as a Christian. Do you know that the body of Christ, okay, the bride, is the restraining force for judgment and for evil? And when we're not doing our job, then judgment comes and evil comes. And look where we are now. And it's because the Christians and the church have not stood up and done their job. And there's such a small remnant that are left doing it that, you know, they can't carry the whole weight. Because now the, the, the scales have tipped and you've got, you know, you've got the evil. It's just, you know, outweighed. It's completely out of balance. And so, you know, something's got to give. Something has got to give, you know, and the, the church has just lost their salt. They've lost their faith, their savor. And it's a sad, sad situation. I'm not going to get in, in, into all that, but, you know, this message is for those with ears to hear, to please pray. And I know that there are many of you who are diligent and who are hearing what I'm saying. God bless you.